Hello, dear friends. Welcome to the International Fab Talks. Today, we are connected with one of the best persons we've ever met. A, a person who's really connected to the world, wanting to do the best even after retirement. She's taking care of so many things, so many departments, and I am just in awe. How could our celebrity be able to do all of this and yet take care of her home, take care of all the things in the right way? So let's get to know about our special guest. She is Miss, Mrs. Kaniganti Rohini Rao. Ma'am, thank you very much for being on our show. Thank you, ma'am. Dear friends, let's get to know about our guest in an official way. It's our duty to introduce our guest in an official manner. Dear ma'am, with your permission, I'd like to go ahead and introduce you in an official way, with your permission. A brief introduction. Yes, dear. I'll try my best. Thank you. So, dear friends, let's get ahead and try to get to know more about our special guest as to where she exiles and what she is there doing with her life even after retirement, how she's inspiring people and helping others to become the best version of themselves. My dear friends, she is result driven. And ask me why? You will get to know slowly why she's so result driven. Energetic, action oriented, a professional only connected with action and of course the proper decisions at the right moment. She, demonst she has a demonstrated track record of success, teaching broad range of subjects and diverse educational topics to different people. Let us just get over it and see how. She has spent more than, I guess, overall five decades, I guess, maybe over than five decades of experience in teaching different fields, different people, different age groups. And there are people who are behind ma'am and asking her to, you know, come forward, come and connect with them and give lectures. Every lecture of hers has been, you know, a boon to the people who have listened to them. And she's been doing this for all age groups, irrespective of any particular age, for everyone she's open. And she's very focused on social work. She's always worked for women. The women's cause, she would like to see all the women up there financially independent and strong. So she focuses herself in that beautiful field, especially in the bank service. When she was in the bank service, she focused on that part. She played a very vital role as the vice president of the State Bank of Hyderabad. Am I right, ma'am? Right. State Bank of Hyderabad Union, convener, women bank, employees of AP, CC member of AIBEA, Apex Bank Union. She was a representative on, on the committee of State Bank of Hyderabad, which constituted for women grievances. I love this. Women grievances. That's very nice, ma'am. From 1997 to 2011, she conducted several inquiries and help the management in the different work and aspects connected to that department. And she's a student of Rosary Convent High School. And that's a pleasure to know that uh, she, ma'am, has been a great you know, alumni of Rosary Convent High School. She's completed uh, her BCom from Usmania University and completed MCom from Andhra University, post-graduation from Vishakapatnam and public relations. She's also there from, uh, gotten, I mean, trained herself in that. Bharti Vidya Bhavan and she's completed a master's in MS Public Relations from SV University and the list goes on my friends. And the beauty, beautiful part of our guest is she's worked as a faculty in Bharti Vidya Bhavan for the past five years that is from 2007 to 2012 and she conducted several classes for PG diploma students and guess in what? Editing and media relations, principles of public relations, relations, mass communication, editing of papers, personality development, team building, etc. And she's been giving the best of lectures in what? In public relations, communication skills, team building, personality development, women and work life, lifestyle management in a few government institutes like MCR Institute of HRD, App, uh, AP Transco Training Institute for the past five years, coordinator of Bhavan's College of Communication and Management, and her strength lies where? In being a leader. She loves to lead and lead others and make others leaders. A good leader creates other leaders. And here she has these leadership qualities, very good in her communication skills, and uh -huh. her work experiences focus on public relations and a license officer in the State Bank of Hyderabad for seven years and more. A license officer skills translator from Telugu to English, both oral and written. That's great. A moderator to meetings, comparer, comparer to official meetings, 
and much more. My dear friends, guess what she is doing now? Presently, since 2019, she is the General Secretary of the State Bank of Hyderabad Retirees Association. And brilliant, ma'am, and hats off to you for being so skilled and so, you know, proactive. That's really nice. And the association she belongs to and heads the associ association as the GM, there are around about 6,000 members. And she heads that association. All senior citizens, and I love this word, super senior citizens, a very challenging role. She's been satisfying many of them who are who are in that group and association, you know, connected to that association. This is her second term, all in, in the All India organization, which is connected to bringing the best for the retirees to make them feel comfortable and to know their rights and you know privileges. In our in her All India Federation, uh, where she is into that, she is the secretary, State Bank Retirees Association and Vice President as well. All India Bank Pensioners and Retirees Association. She belongs to that. And the list goes on. I'm really in awe and becoming so emotional and excited. How could one person manage so many feathers in her cap? It's really a wonder, ma'am. I love the excitement. I love the passion. And I love the energy that you have. And I like the way you focused on women empowering themselves. I love this and would love to know more about you. Thank you so much for accepting the invite from the International Fab Talks. Thank you, Andrea. I'm, I'm very much less than compared to the next generation entrepreneur woman like you. It's a great opportunity for me to interact with you. Thank you so much, ma'am. That's so sweet of you to say that. But ma'am, we could in get inspired. You know, you are giving your best to the right people, the people who really require your talent, your expertise, and your courage. Seeing you, there are many other people who will come forward to do what you are doing. Many of them don't take that responsibility on their head. So you've shouldered those beautiful responsibilities in different ways and we applaud you for that, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, we go on with the first question for this session. How would you define yourself? Who is the real Rohini? Rohini is a strong woman, always proved that she is different from other women. I'm a passionate human being. I'm a friendly human being. I'm a good household. I'm a good mother, good wife. So I feel that I played all my roles and I was a very good daughter. My father used to love me a lot. So out of the four children, I was his pet. And today, whatever I am, it is because I'm a father's daughter. And the, my neighbors, my friends, my family, I have a very big family. I'm accepted by many. And I... I'm in relationship with everybody, whoever is there in my life and who will come into my life. This is the strength of mine. I'm always connected to a bigger world. Wonderful. The first thing you said, I am a strong woman. And that proves you are indeed a very strong person, ma'am. Because you say towards the end, I love to bond. I love to network. I love to you know maintain the relationships with everyone and keep it in a good way such that we could give the best to the society. Very nice. I really like you start off with strength and end it with bonding. That's really nice. In this uh, way, I could understand that you want to, you are a candle and you are spreading your light to the others who ever come in contact with you. That's I feel the other candles are giving me light and I'm, I'm glowing because of them. How sweet. You are so humble and down to earth, ma'am. I'm, I was just saying you are a person who has no ego, who has no, uh, you know, that feeling that I have achieved so many things. And I ha should have to be feeling like this. You're very down to earth. And you make the other person feel good in, in your presence. That's around it. And that is a beautiful skill, life skill, to make the other person feel good in your presence. So because I, I'm, I'm a learner. I watch, I watch the world. And I see many women growing leaps and bounds, which I never imagined I can. So I try to learn from them. And I, I admire the younger generation who are more bold than me, more educated, more... Uh, into the world than us because of today's modern world. So I, I feel that I'm not big. There is much more to become bigger. How sweet. You have more dreams. That's very nice. I appreciate that. That's really nice. Dear. Wonderful. Dear ma'am, may we know how you manage stress because you've been through all of these decades of hard work and you know perseverance and consistency, you might have faced a lot of ups and downs. There were different people you might have interacted because you were in the bank. You might have seen different colleagues and you know, customers and clients. 
and you were a faculty member as well. How do you think you were able to manage your stress levels or if you could suggest some tips for us where we could take hold of our stress that we have on an everyday basis? Yes, dear. The fact that I'm like this today is because of the family backing. My family was always encouraging me in whatever I do. They never tried to belittle my interests. So sometimes I be for more time outside. Sometimes I'll be at home. I may be on time. I may not be on time. But I, my coming home or going out was accepted uh, infinitely. My children and my husband, my parents were my neighbors when my children were young. So that stress was not there. My mother used to take care of my kids. My father was helping me. My husband, my, ch my children. And I have seen that the working women's children grow fast. They also started understanding me and my extracurricular, external interests. And they also cooperated. There was never much demands from the home side, which made me feel stressed. And another one, job. I enjoyed my 40, 39 years, seven months I worked for the bank. At the age of 21, I joined the bank. At the age of 21, okay. and I retired at 60. And I felt that I need, if I if the bank gives me five more years or 10 more years, I would love to work. Every minute I enjoyed. Last minute I came out of the bank with a lot of anguish. And you won't believe, I, I, I want to tell that how much I like my job. Everywhere, I was in the administration, I was in the branch. I was in a small branch, I was in a big branch. But everywhere I enjoyed the customers, the colleagues, the bosses. Everyone used to like me. I, I used to like everybody. That's how it went on. Love and affection, which was around me, made me energetic. So work stress was never there. And I had I was on my own. Conveyance was not a stress because I drove my scooter from my 28th year. And car, even now I drive my car and two-wheeler. So I'm, I'm on my own. And I have to tell proudly that not even one day, I took help from my family to drop me at the bank or bring me from the bank. For all the 40 years, I went on my own. I came on my own. And everything was easy. So I don't think I got stressed working. I don't think house has stressed me. Only thing is, sometimes I was disturbed because of the happenings in the bank. At home, there was not much domestic I have a pretty beautiful family. God has gifted me. So at home, I had no problems, no demands, nothing. Uh, very understanding family. At workplace, jealousies, discrimination, uh, backstabbing. Uh, people, uh, out of 100, if 90 people accept me, 10 people were there always who used to pull my legs. So that disturbances, anxieties used to be there. And immediately God gave me strength and uh, intelligence to overcome that in my own way without taking anybody's help. I was always helping others, but I don't remember having taken a help from anybody in my 40 years of career, whether it is work-wise, whether it is by personal problem or whether with the disturbances created by my colleagues. It happens in the work life, some disturbances come, but we need to be intelligent enough to understand the problem understand the situation and find out your own solution. And once we come out of that problem, we feel so proud and happy that you forget what you have gone through. So this way, I, I didn't have any stress at the, in my job life. Along with my job, because there was a lot, little dissatisfaction that I couldn't climb in my career because in our bank, post, bank job, every three years we have to pack a suitcase and get out of the place. And we have to serve in the rural areas, which was not possible for many women like me who had the family responsibility. I felt fundamental, primarily family is my responsibility. After giving my energies to the family, leftover, I have to go for the work and enjoy, give my private space. So with this, back, I didn't take the promotion. I stayed back. But that dissatisfaction of me staying back or feeling that I can do much more than what I'm doing has spread my energies into the uh, serving these colleagues around me in the form of a ladies club secretary, in the form of a vice president of a staff union, in the form of a committee member of a sexual harassment committee. And apart from that, still there was time for me. I used to give my eight hours to the bank, never took even half an hour permission. 
I gave more than what I've been paid, more number of hours. Then later, uh, to give a better efficiency in the workplace, when I was posted to public relations, evening at the age of 50, I went to uh, Bharti Vijayabon and did my PG course in public relations to give my best to the bank. And then after doing the PG, I felt I should do doctorate after my uh, retirement. So I did my PG in SV University to enable my, to get eligibility to do PhD. So this is how, I, and my teaching started along with my bank work. Up to six, I was in the bank, six to eight, I was in Bharti Vijayabon. Seeing my teaching interest, after my retirement, immediately I got a job in Bharti Vijayabon as a director of evening college. I served them for three years. Then I became the general secretary for my union. Then I left it. So I, there was no stress, except domestic problems which were unforeseen when they come forward, like death of my father. At the age of 30, I got really disturbed. That was the stress time. I lost my daughter last year, one and a half year back. A grown-up daughter, 37 years old. So that was the only time in my life I felt a little low or depressed, trying to come out of it. But still, I feel stress was not there. Underlying stress, if it is there, I don't know. My health was always good. My energies were the same. My enthusiasm is the same. My external hobbies are the same. I, 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 I keep myself active for 12 hours to 14 hours. Great, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing all of that. That's really very nice. And yet you are standing tall, like a great giant facing life, being resilient. You've been through a lot of ups and downs. You still faced life so bravely. And yet today you are smiling and shining in the world, irrespective of personal loss and as well as the professional up, ups and downs. You are doing your best and giving your best. And Thank I you. must say, ma'am, today you mm -hmm. are an inspiration to me and to many out there, really. Because, you know, yes, ma'am. And, you know, having that courage to do something for the others, irrespective of your own personal uh, ups and downs or your domestic life or maybe your professional life, you're balancing both so well. You're giving out your best. And we love the smile that you have still on your face and, you know, trying to overcome everything with positivity and, of course, with courage and resilience. That's the need of the art Thank where you. all of us could learn from you. Yes, dear. God bless you, ma'am, for that. And thank you. I'm really pleased that you today shared space with us today. You have, you know, accepted our invitation. Romba I don't know. I'm telling it in Tamil. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I feel much. I feel it's a God-given opportunity to get this chance. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Dear ma'am, as I said just now, you are an inspiration to me. In, in fact, in if I face any of these tragedies, God forbid, but in case we may never know what's the future. If I face, I'm going to stand tall and resilient like you, face everything strongly. Yes, dear. You have no option. Yes, dear. I, I do have my grief and sorrow, but that should not stop me. That's what I'm trying to do. Yes, dear. And this is the message we want to spread across the world to stand tall and strong. Don't be back, you know, bogged down or don't lie low when you face difficulties. Rise up. Rise like a phoenix. And so here today we have Rohini Ma'am, the phoenix who rises up and faces all challenges, either personal or professional. Dear Ma'am, you're an inspiration. But today we'd like to know who is your inspiration? Who inspired you to be who you are today? Many scores of people in my life God has sent so many people with whom I got inspired time and again. If you talk about my childhood, it was, it was my father. My father was the first graduate, maybe first or second graduate from my village. He was an advocate. And being a only daughter among the four children, he pampered me. So he was my inspiration. I used to, he became a friend of mine because he was like a friend at when I was 30, when I lost him, I felt a little low accepting that loss because he was just 55 but he always encouraged me in everything and today if I was a, in those days if I was a postgraduate when my mother and my grandparents were seeking alliances to me from my intermediate days asking me to get married and all if at all I went up to post-graduation it's because of my uh, father and my mother also in a way because she accepted what my father has said and I got married at, uh, when I was in the final year of graduation. My husband also has uh, encouraged me to study more. He was busy with his studies. I studied more. After my marriage, I did my post-graduation. Then after, 
after coming into the bank, I did my bank departmental test. So there was no nobody who stopped me in whatever I wanted to do, except that I didn't grow in the career because I thought the family will be put to loss and I would be burdening my mother. That was my conscious decision. But I was disappointed a little. I feel the present woman should not stop like me. Every opportunity they should uh, catch up. And they should grow. And growing in the career also they can balance the family life. This, if at all I can go back to my 30s, I would do that because I have seen great ladies who inspired me in the bank, top management, women. Men, many are there who were my gurus. Like in the 30s, uh, you were mentioning about my trade union activities. I became a leader or I was made a leader or I was chosen as a leader in my 30s uh, because of uh, one great personality, C.H. Ishwar Rao, Comrade Ishwar Rao. He was a true communist and he was everything for bank employees, the sacrifices he made, the betterment of the life he made for the employees, the comfort he gave, the the way he was solving the problems of the employees, all those things uh, made me, he inspired so much that uh, knowing a little about him itself, I became a trade union leader. If it, And I proudly say, I'm a trade union leader, whether I could reach the top or not, because the true idealism of a trade unionist, I carried with me which I learned from Comrade Ishwar Rao. Then later in the bank, I was posted to law department, one AGM, KGK Murthy, and Surnar and Rao Garu, two AGMs, just like our Dinkar Rao Garu, they were great top executives who were very human, very, they pampered me like anything and they brought out what I don't know. Uh, in the work, work area, they were so impressed with me and I could give my best because I was advocate's daughter. And I was in that area, being in law department, I could impress them very well. I was a small clerk. I had uh, big officers on top of me, but all important jobs were, many important jobs I have carried out. That is the uh, motivation what I got uh, from my uh, HODs. Then from there, I went to the IT department. There I met many stalwarts. I've seen a little bit of the technology being in the IT department. Then I met one Hamsini Meenan, one DGM who came from uh, Kerala. We became great friends. Even today, I used to I used to see myself in those women. Leela Venkateshwar Rao, she was one DGM of IT department. Uh, her background was entirely different compared to Hamsini Minan's background. But still, the way they managed, the way they conducted, the way they have commanded the position, the chair, and the way they have brought the dignity to that chair, I was very inspired. Then later I met Renu Chalu, madam, who was the MD of my bank, who came from State Bank of India. She was taking care of her father-in-law, 80 years old father-in-law, her husband who is in uh, Mumbai, her daughter, unmarried daughter in Mumbai, a son in uh, uh, London, US. And she was the best MD I have seen. One of the best MD. I don't say best, one of the best MD. So after seeing them, my message to the youngsters is, Work and home can be balanced. Maybe uh, you can, you may have intermittent irritants of leaving the home and going and, but again, God will see that you come back and you'll have a comfortable place. So though many have inspired me, the top managements like Dinkar Rao Garu, as he mentioned in the morning, Shantanu Mukherjee, Krishnamachari Garu. And I have to make a mention about uh, my PR AGM, Virinchi Garu. But for him, I wouldn't have... Uh, blossomed like that in PR. The way he encouraged me because I was the first woman posted to the PR department of uh, State Bank of Hyderabad and uh, uh, community services uh, activities were also clubbed with that department. So both the areas of my interest were there. Then I understood that PR is there inside me. Till then, I, I knew I was better than others, but I never thought I'm that. What I showed, I proved myself. So that has brought me out more in teaching and uh, uh, um, multiplying my qualifications in PR. And then today I'm a very satisfied person that, okay, I didn't take promotion, but I did something for myself. So that dissatisfaction has gone. So many have inspired me all through in the 40 years in the bank and outside. My students have inspired me. In Bharti Vijayabhavan, I used to teach the army personnel, lieutenants, 
who 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 stay in Secunderabad and because they were on study leave for two years, they need to come to the college, a regular college. They can't do the part time or uh, which doesn't have attendance. So I used to teach lieutenant commandants, thirty people, forty people on communications and all. It was a thrill. They're exchanging with them and that confidence level, like my confidence has improvised day by day, being in the union, facing some 3,000, 4,000 crowd. Once I take the mic, I don't know from where that oratory comes, but I can speak with much ease. Whether it is 5,000, 6,000, it doesn't matter to me. What I want to tell ex tempo, I can speak. And whoever is the students in front of me, nothing will deter me from expressing in the best way. So all these people inspired me, my students, my management, my colleagues, my friends, my family. It's not one section. Wonderful, ma'am. Thank you for sharing all of that so nicely. You remember everyone and you're grateful for to everyone for being an inspiration. And in fact, you found inspiration in every single person who you come in contact with, including your students as well, your family, your colleagues, your seniors. That's really nice. Thanks for mentioning all of that, ma'am. Thank you so much. We'd now like to know, how were you as a little kid? Who was that little Rohini? Rohini was a mischievous kid, a tomboy. My mother always used to fear that how I'm going to grow as a woman. She had all fears. And in the colony, neighborhood, I was always among the boys. And my play, play things and hobbies were always what the boys also can't do. Climbing the trees, going into the hills, all those things. I never played with my girls. I used to be a protector like to the girls in the playground. If some, some boy is teasing her, then I used to go to the girls. Otherwise, my play playtime, because I had three brothers and we were in a big mango garden. So many boys used to come to our place. So I played with the boys. I never had the discrimination that I'm with a boy or a girl. So my play things were almost all our boyish things. Like whatever street boys do, I did everything. How nice. I enjoyed all that. That's really nice. And that is missing nowadays in most of the, you know, youngsters who are enjoying their childhood. They miss out on all of that playing in the open and, you know, mixing with others because now it's... I want, I want to tell you one example of telling what I was. We had a small hillock, Asmangad. Hyderabadi people know Asmangad was there. I was half a kilometer down the Asmangad. In those days, Asmangad was a big jungle, a hillock. And uh, we used to play on that hillock. Uh, hide and seek and one person used to be for four days five days couldn't catch anybody it was a big area and behind the rocks and all we used to play that was our play time then one one boy said when i was hardly 12 12 years 13 years one boy said you say you are very brave can you go to that hillock at night 12 o'clock i said yes and the challenge i th there was some prize money given they pulled up the boys my brother was saying you shouldn't do that because the, the way to go there was like a, I mean, as the forest, you have to go at night, 12 o'clock. But I took the challenge. They kept one stone uh, wrapped with a red blouse piece or something on a hillock. And at night, 12 o'clock, uh, without telling our parents, we used to sneak out and they st stood there. And it was in those days that spirits and devils and all those stories were there in Telugu, Chandamama and all. We believed they are there. So I started walking, but because I wanted to defeat them and wanted to prove that I'm brave like boys, I did go, I was sweating, my heart was thumping, I was afraid, but that didn't make me come back until I went to the hillock, half kilo, quarter kilometer or something and brought that back and proved that I'm brave. So just I wanted to tell, I used to play like this, very mischievous. Wonderful. And the way you were explaining it, you know, I could form that visual picture in my mind. I could get that imaginary picture, like how you are walking up in the night and going. There. I could really feel that. That's really nice. And thanks for sharing that beautiful memory. And that's I, that's how I guess you have that, that power, you know, no matter what comes, I'm going to face it. Very nice. I really like it. My father is the reason for that. He never said that what you're doing is not right. He never said that. He said, do whatever you want to do. Great. You're lucky. You're one lucky daughter. Many of the daughters out there aren't lucky like you, ma'am. Most of their parents hold them back. And you're I've best. seen, I have many cousins who have so many restrictions, who had uh, stops in their studies, everything. I, I know. Because our family is big. All, all my cousins were not as lucky as me. Yes. And I feel the family is the world from where we can learn. 
we need not go anywhere. If you look at our own family, extended family, we see all types of lives, all problems, all opportunities, all benefits we have, which makes us feel happy and contented. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. That's really nice. Very true. Very true. Dear ma'am, you've been reading a lot of books. You just mentioned Chanda Mama as well. Is there any other book which you'd like to share with us where we could also get a chance to read that book? Chanda Mama and uh, Andhra Prabha, my father forced me to read because I was, I have taken in Rosary Convent Hindi as my second language. And we, our mother tongue is Telugu. So he wanted to see that I read Telugu. So Chanda Mama is a kiddish book like today's uh, uh, cartoons, cartoon books or something. And Andhra Prabha also, my mother used to purchase that weekly magazine in that for children, one corner was there, Bala Prabha or something. I used to read that, but reading was never my passion much. Even today, I try a lot to read, but I'm very bad at reading. Uh, Reader's Digest used to come. I used to read the newspaper. That was of my interest every day since my childhood. My father used to say, you have to improve English. So you read the newspaper. And I used to read the plaints and notices, what he types being a lawyer. That was my interest. Politics, uh, reading the newspaper. That was of more interest than the fiction or the stories. Seeing the movies, I used to catch up with the stories. Not much of reading. Okay, dear. Okay. Even no newspaper reading, that's it. Mostly. Yes, dear. Thank you for sharing. Of course, Reader's Digest is also one of the greatest books that, you know, has good language in it where you could really read and improve you know, on your English abilities to speak and to develop. Ma'am, uh, how would you want to be remembered in this world and why should people remember you? I want to be remembered that Rohini was bold, active, helpful, friendly, passionate, humane, if at all anybody wants to remember me, this is the way that I want them to remember me. And I want to remember, be remembered as a family person. My whole family likes me. I mean, my husband has eight sisters and he is the youngest. So all my sister-in-laws and my cousins, 22 cousins, all of them on my father's side, all of them, they like me. So I feel that as I am, what I am, they have seen me. And if they remember me, it's okay. But I don't feel I'm some somebody exceptional or something different. I feel many of us are like this. So there is nothing much special to remember about me. Except that I wanted to tell that I was straightforward, honest, and with high moral standards, what my father has set. And I can tell proudly, if I sleep, even one day, I if I try to retrospect also, I don't find an occasion when, when I went against my consciousness. Not even a single day. What may come? I used to go by my consciousness, laid down values, my moral standards. Okay, I can't change the people around me, but I didn't change. I won't change. I want to be like this. So people have understood what I am. So this, this is one reason people think that because I'm straightforward, a little stubborn, and stubborn on my principles and very frank in my expression, people sometimes mistook me, mistake me as very arrogant, adamant and all. But later they'll understand. I want them to remember that I'm bold, I'm arrogant, I'm adamant when it comes to compromising the values. At the same time, I want them to understand what a lovable person I am. That's it. Yes, dear. Thank you, ma'am. We love you the way you are, you know. You're just a person where we could learn a lot and we could really change that area of our lives where we think, no, we are not, we can't do it. Or maybe this is what we could compromise here. If you don't want to compromise on certain things, you stand and stick up to your values. You know, that's very nice the way you put it. And let people accept me or not. I will follow the principles which I have, you know, uh, learned from my parents and especially my dad. That's really nice. Yes, dear. It's a good, uh, you know, a way of sharing your thoughts today because many of the women out there they have this wavering thing they don't have stability so you say that you are a person who focused only on your values you know you, you are very frank upright so i want people to be like that to stand up for themselves and to say yes this is what it is and this is how it is going to be no matter if they agree or don't agree with you if you know you're right then it's okay. i i did compromise I, not on the values but on the circumstances, sometimes if I had to accept what I don't like, doing something, 
not the not my which comes between my value system but other things com without compromise life doesn't go on with my family also with my husband also with my parents with my neighbors sometimes compromise is required and i did compromise but not on the core values yes to the extent i feel okay i can let go i yes. i did bend that that's the reason i have so many people with me yes that's really nice for clarifying that once again for us that's very nice i really like that dear ma'am we go on to the next question there are several senior citizens out there who don't have a home they are living in the old age homes run by the government or the private ngos and we've seen few of them on the streets railway stations bus stops at odd places they have given their all for their children's growth for the family every penny they have used for their whole, whole family and now they don't have a single penny in their pocket and they found themselves being abandoned by their own kith and kin now the question lies here should people start saving for themselves every person who begins to start earning from the very first month when they get their earnings should they start saving for their retirement as you come from the banking sector and especially women and even you could take even the male members also irrespective of gender the senior citizens are suffering now should they start beginning to save could you speak something about savings ma'am yes in present scenario everybody has to save whether it is young old or man or woman or girl or a boy the reason is the joint family system when it has got corrupted when the karta was there when the family properties were together when everybody was taken care of whether you earn don't earn you never had to starve whether you earn or don't earn your children get married whether you earn or don't earn your children get education you have a roof when that joint family system has gone when three generations are not living under one roof when isolated families have come when the parents don't know where they stay all the parents are not able to be with the children the reason is job takes them somewhere sometimes we see families four of them living in four places colleges are somewhere schools are somewhere both the spouse and man and woman both working so they are not at one place and when this is the scenario when you need money you don't know even if you have your parents by the time they come and help you the time is off you may need now so every child every woman every girl every ad young adult adult everybody has to save a little for their future for their present needs plus for their future because future is really very uncertain today what my, my grandmother was very certain my grandmother took care of four uh, old ladies in her house who were young widows maybe her mother in law step mother in law or sister in law uh, she allowed along with her eight daughters and nine nine children three three or four old ladies to stay in her place she cooked for them but she didn't have that comfort she had to live in because i'm i have married my maternal uncle my grandmother is my mother in law i being in hyderabad she didn't want to leave the ancestral house she stayed with only one of my sister in law who happened to be a divorcee because she is there she could she stayed in her home at least she had eight daughters to take care of in turns but today i have nobody to take care of me in my old age so money is the vitamin which has to be with you we have to spend for the children but at the same time we have to keep for ourselves so that tomorrow if they are not able to fund us we we should not go on the streets likewise children also if the parents have become broken because of see circumstances medical expenses have gone up so much we we thought our pensions will take care of us pension is only nowadays sufficient for the medicines we take both of us when that is the scenario you can't expect from your parents any help if you don't have ancestral properties or accumulated assets so everybody has to save there is no no choice even i feel a school going child with this kind of traffic and school buses and other things he should keep the pocket money a reserve in his bag otherwise he won't reach home this is the scenario everybody has to save perfect perfect ma'am i like it the way you said even a little student also should have a little savings that's very nice thank you for sharing all because, of that because being economically independent begging or asking somebody is very difficult if you are a dependent it's easy but once you are economically independent you can't ask 
people won't sympathize with you if you ask. So it's better to save. Yes, ma'am. I like the way you put it in the last few lines. You made that very clear. Very, very nice. Thank you very much. And hats off to you for this brilliant answer which you've shared now. Thank you, dear. Dear ma'am, do you watch movies? And if so, your favorite movie? Movies that I do watch. I like going out. My children also, among my, both my children used to like coming to the movies. So we used to go. Uh, I like anything and everything. You see, I'm a multifaceted, multi-interest person. At the age of 20s, I liked that Bobby and Marie, Maro Charitra. When I was 16, 17, I got sweet by that. I saw that eight times without telling my mother when I was in plus two or graduation first year, I think. We used to go, Rajeshri Productions used to pull us to the Dilsha Tagis morning show, bunking the women's college, then Reddy College. We used to go to that Basan Takis. So those teenage movies that I enjoyed then afterwards, when, it, when I came into 30s, I my taste changed towards the family movies like with Shoban Babu, Nageshwar Rao, Ek Bangar Kutumam, Pandanti Kapuram, all those movies and Hindi movies also, Ham Aapke Hai Kaun, all those movies. I used to see Hindi and Telugu more. English, Rosary Convent took us to some fight and movies and after that, because of my husband's interest, I went to fight and movies, but I was not much fond of because I was always surrounded surrounded with my, either with my children or with my cousins and all who know only in Telugu. And my friends, and I never go alone anywhere. Even till today, one weakness of mine is I can't stay alone. I can't go alone anywhere. Even to purchase a small biscuit packet, I'll search if anybody is there to sit in my car beside me. That is the way I live. I live in crowds. I like living in crowds. I can't stay alone. So that's the reason I don't find time also. So I, as movies, I, uh, when I came to 40s, I like Shankara Varanam, like uh, Vish Vishwanath movies like Saptapadi, uh, all those movies. Then after that, now the latest movies which are coming from since 10 years, except Bahubali, I don't think I liked anything. The music, today's music, today's cinemas are not my of my taste. Maybe I'm outdated for this kind of music and this kind of movies. Yes, I get that. That's very nice for sharing all of that. But still, but still, I want to be with the community, with this generation, so I go to the club. I don't spend my money and go to the theater now, but when the club shows a free movie, Jubilee's Club, I, I'm a member, I go there. I see the movies. It's not that I... But none, none of those movies are sitting in my mind, like the old movies. So that shows that I, I'm not liking them much. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. I get that. That's really nice. Ma'am, would you like to share the names of some of your best friends today with us? Best friends? Prabhavati. One of my friends whom I met in 88 and my school friend, Sheila, college friend, school friend, Praveena, who is in Houston, Sheila, who is in Whisper Valley today uh, in Meenakshi and uh, Prabhati, who is in Malkashgiri. And uh, from the bank, the school and college, I have at least 20, 20 each face. Good friends. Best friends, maybe three to four. Good friends will be 10 to 20. And neighborhood, I have some 20, 30. So my, when I started distributing the wedding cards for my daughter, I thought 200 will be sufficient. It went to 500. Close people. So I just can't tell. Their, their list is too big. Great. That's really nice. Thank you for mentioning all of your friends from school, college, your neighborhood, your colleagues, everyone. Dear ma'am, is there any message you'd like to give the youngsters out there if they would like to be where you are today? accomplishing all of these things. I see youngsters are working hard, striving to reach what they want to do. But balancing their life, I, I, I find I'm, I was very much, I didn't have much time up to my 60th year watching the youngsters because I had only one daughter who got married and went to US in 2009. So except my daughter, later I was always among the elderly crowds. But now I shifted to a community where 500 people are there, 31 floors. And out of that financial district, almost your age profile are 80% occupants of this community. I find that they are developing, but it's lopsided development. Either they are neglecting the family, either they are not taking care of their health, or they are, they are depending on maids, 
and other things. The balance of life, I think they have to learn. Maybe, and their work, they are not enjoying the work, work to the core like we enjoy. They have that work stress. Long working hours. Yes, even banks, we had long working hours. But we accepted that. See, we, we go 30 days to the bank to take a pay packet. When I'm assured of that pay packet, why I should be unhappy? It was my choice to take up the job. And I know very well I have to stay for long hours. I know very well different type of customers will change my mood. All will not be humble. All will not be mannered. But still, when we accept, I used to enjoy my job because I know that I accepted the job and I know the difficulties of the job and I welcome them. But today's generation, what I see is they like the pay packet, what they get, but they are stressed. They don't like the job. They have You ask, how is the job? They have 101 complaints. But on the last day of my job, 40th, 39th year, seventh month, when I had to uh, lay down my papers, that was the, you know, that last day of the uh, bank we retired. And I was working in GHMC branch and where the pensions, we have to give at least 60 to 70,000 pensions and the uh, CDs come, we have to load and the pensioners make a big queue. The street sweepers taking from the sweepers to the director of GHMC waits for their pay. And until we do that uploading that day, 29th or 30th, and to get that CDs, we had to follow up with the establishment department. And in that scenario, I had to retire. My DGM, who is my controller, he liked me a lot. He said, Dhawanji, SK Dhawanji, he was in crossroads. He said, Madam, I want to come to your farewell party. Please tell the time when it when when I, when I should come. And I told my husband and children, you need not come because I'll be busy up to eight o'clock. There is no fun. Some other time, we'll try to catch up with the branch people. And I told my branch manager not to arrange the farewell at six o'clock, which is a ritual, four o'clock, stopping the customers, stopping the work, all of us sitting and trying to speak a little few words about me and I trying to acknowledge them. All that I said, postpone it up to eight o'clock until the server is there. Server allows us to work. Today, it is crucial for us. We have to work. So if at all you want to arrange a farewell, do it after eight o'clock. And I told my controller DGM not to come. Sir, today we are not arranging the, they are not, they want to arrange the farewell, but I said, because it's a salary day, I don't want to do it. This is how I enjoyed my work till the last minute. I thought only one thing, today up to eight o'clock, I can log into my server, but tomorrow the server will not allow me. I enjoyed the work till the last minute. But that kind of enjoyment of the job, I'm not seeing with the this generation, many of them, I'm, I'm not saying exceptions will be there, but I'm trying to counsel them, tell them that when you are in the job, don't think of the house. I used to give 100%. I never, once I leave the house, I never used to think of the house. What may come? Because I was confident after coming home, I can manage. I can convince my people. I can convince my children. I can cook for them or I can pack something and bring them. So why I should get stressed? This kind of thing, they sit with the system. They think about the house. They think about the husband, children. They're getting stressed. I feel they have to learn something. From, because our job going was more stressful than today's generation. The reason is we had to go in the buses. We had to go in the rickshaws. It used to take two hours to reach, one hour to reach the place and one hour to come home. And we didn't have these comforts at home. These ACs, this, uh, uh, this uh, cooking systems, these microwaves. We had hardly a refrigerator to store the things if we come late. Except that we didn't have all these things, dishwashers. We depended on so many things, physical work and the manual labor. But still, we didn't get that much stressed. The acceptance level has come down. That really pinches me. I feel if the classes are to be conducted, I'll conduct on this. Wonderful. You can conduct one for us on the International Fab Talks and you can enlighten all the young mothers and young professionals out there, ma'am. Not to get stressed. Yes, dear. Job is, a, job is essential. Everybody should work. Because yes. woman also has to grow, woman has to be economically independent, woman has to have their personal space. Always see if you sit at home 24 by 7, there is a work at home. You can beautify your home more, you can make it more clean, you can wash your clothes, you can make your husband happy, you can make your children happy. 24 by 7, you can do. 
but what it is you're going to get out of it. What happiness, what challenge you faced. One day you'll be disappointed. So I feel they should work. Plus they should be a family woman because without nobody can live in isolation. All should have a good knitted family. End result is your happiness is with your family. So don't neglect the family, but at the same time, don't give up the job. That is my message to the today's woman. Yes, dear. Thank you so much, ma'am. That was very nice to have you with us today. Before we end, I would like to request you uh, to just share if you could, ob if you would oblige, sing a song for us, your favorite song. Would you mind? That is the only thing what I could not do in my life. Even I'm not a bath bathroom singer because since my childhood, I know that my voice is not very nice. A sloka? Sloka? I read the puja slokas, but I can't chant. Okay. Please excuse me. Okay, okay, dear. No worries, no worries, ma'am. I can give a speech. I yes. can give a speech. You ask me to any subject you ask, extempo, I can give a speech, but I can't sing. Yes, dear. Fine, fine. No worries, ma'am. Any poem you remember from school or something? Any, any quotation, quotation, a proverb or something like that? I, I, I try to catch up with the quotes when I want to send in the WhatsApp to somebody. Okay. okay. But one thing I, I like, the communication bridges the relationships. Please. That quote I always remember. Communication bridges the relationship. That's really nice. Ma'am, we have a small segment now called as the rapid fire round. I will just take five minutes. Okay. I would like you to share your time because we've already finished one hour with you and I don't know how the one hour passed. I would love to have more time with you. Uh, and I, but please I think excuse that, me I promise that I will be short and I will finish it before 60 minutes yes dear we'll have part two also this is part one because I know there's a lot of questions to be asked still and lots of answers to be you know got from you we'll have a session again maybe tomorrow we'll sit down with you and have another session of course if you permit me definitely I will come back and mm -hmm. we'll have a session with you we have now a small round called as the rapid fire round which will take for five minutes now is that okay Okay. Yeah, Thank yeah. you, ma'am. Thanks. My dear friends, it's a beautiful journey today, you know, with a special person called as Rohini. She is that beautiful star in our life who wants to inspire you to empower yourselves and to be that spark in your life. She wants you to understand that you could be the spark in your own life and around you. And she's been, you know, accomplishing so many things. And uh, there are so many questions that are still unanswered. I would love to ask her more questions, but I know time. She is a busy person. She has many projects on hand. And so we just take next five minutes and we'll meet her again in part two. So dear ma'am, you have to answer here in one word or two words. It's a small round. It's called as the rapid fire. I will round. try. I will try. Yeah. Because and thanks always, for being the guiding star. Yes, dear. Always pressy writing was very difficult for me. Essay writing was easy. Okay. So, so, so now, I know it's going to be a difficult round. I will try. Yes, dear. So you just have to make a choice here. Ma'am, is it cake, chocolates or ice cream? Chocolates. Strawberry flavor, chocolate flavor, butterscotch. Chocolate flavor. Summer, winter, rainy, autumn or spring season? Winter. Land, water or air travel? Water. City, village or town? City. When you help others, do you expect anything in return, ma'am? Yes, no. Not much. Maybe a small acknowledgement if I did a big job for them. Maybe. It will make me a little cheerful. Otherwise, no. That's really nice. Thank you. Your idea of a beautiful day? Every day. Are you a great cook? Mediocre. Your, the name of your favorite recipe or cuisine? Biryani. The name of your favorite teacher or sir? Teacher is uh, Rosalind. In Rosary Convent, one teacher was there, Rosalind. And Leela Venkatesham was an English teacher in a women's college. And Bharti Rao in Reddy College. We, I had admiring teachers. Economics, she used to teach Bharti Rao. Ma'am, are you an early bird or a night owl? Night out. Salty or sweet food, spicy food? Salty, salty. Is it all about money, happiness or both? Happiness. Money was always there with me. I feel I'm rich. I may not be rich in others' eyes, but we are from the middle class, upper middle class or middle class, whatever it is. I, I feel I was rich from the day one. 
and I am rich. Wonderful. It doesn't matter. Yes, dear. Ma'am, do you consider yourself to be an introvert, an extrovert or an ambivert? Extrovert. When Rohini ma'am is all alone in a room, no gadgets, no family members, only you and the sunshine in your room, you're connected to your thoughts. Where do your thoughts take you? Into the past, present or future? So many things to do. I travel into the future. Great. That's really nice. You love socializing or me time? Socializing. Are you a great thinker, a doer or both? Both. I think and do. You believe in experiential learning or theoretical learning? In my life, it was more experiential learning. Is it now fresh salads and fruits or fried food? Fried. Yes, dear. Home cooked food or food ordered from out? Mostly home cooked. Very honest on that. How sweet. You love to spend time on a beach or in a forest? Both. I love both places. I love nature. I love mountaineering. I love uh, traveling is my uh, hobby. Okay. That's I nice. love seeing places. Great. And especially the places I like Himalayan range. I like the Pacific Ocean. I went to Mexico. I like beaches. I like hills. I like forests. More than the city and the constructions, I would like to go there. That's nice. Uttarakhand, I loved. I went to Manasarovar. I went to Muktinath. To take people along with me, pilgrimage plus taking as helping the elders in my house, home, my family, as well as I enjoyed the nature. I like Nepal. I like Kashmir. I didn't go to Kashmir yet. I went to Uttaranchal. I like Himalayan belt Fine. and the ocean, Pacific Ocean. I enjoyed a lot. Great. That's really nice, Mom. And thanks for sharing all of that. Thank you. Dear Mom, do you love riding your two-wheeler or a four-wheeler? Two-wheeler. I am, I excited two-wheeler, but off late, I'm using more of four-wheeler. But my passion is for two-wheeler. Wonderful. That's really nice, ma'am. Ma'am, we have one last request from you is you would have to share three magical words with us. We have please, sorry, and thank you. As we all know that we use that in communication and responding to others, which we've been taught by our parents and elders our teachers, but today we would like you to share three magical words which could empower us and transform our lives, which could create magic in our lives. Always yours, lovingly, bless you. Oh, my sweetness. That's so nice. That's really nice. And dear ma'am, but before we end the session, I'd like to take a promise from you. I would love to have you again in part two because there are many questions which I still have with me to, you know, ask you and to get to know more about that and empower our audience and as well as our guests. Would you oblige to join us once again on the International Fab Talks? I don't know that I'm such a good speaker and you would give me a second chance, but if you want me, I'm there always for you. How sweet. That's Any really number nice. of times. Oh, how sweet. That's really nice. That's nice. I want other women out there who have that fear within them, who, you know, have that type of second thought. I can't do it. Maybe or may not, I can't do I can't do But I want them to know that you can be like Rohini man. You can come out and face the world. You can balance things no matter what. You have a lot of power within you and I want that feminine energy within you to reach out to others. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Thank you. I wait to see you again. Yes, dear. Very soon, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. Dear friends, with this, we come to an end to the International Fab Talks. We had a fabulous time with our special guest, Ms. Rohini. She's here to create a great difference in our lives and, of course, to empower us. We promise you that we'll bring her back on the International Fab Talks to share more experiences. For now, it's a goodbye from the International Fab Talks and our celebrity, ma'am. Rohini, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, dear. God bless.